Chapter 4, Mishnah 8. From here to the end of the tractate, the Mishnah discusses the laws of Nesach wine. Wine poured as a libation to an idol. Nesach wine is prohibited for all benefit. Mishnah 2 3. The rabbis extended this prohibition to include any wine that belongs to an idolater, even where it is not known that it was used for a libation. They also decree that even a Jew's wine becomes prohibited, prohibited, prohibited if an idolater touches it in certain ways, because of the strong suspicion that the that he touches it in order to perform a libation. The prohibition of Nesach wine applies even to grape juice, but only if it has reached a certain point in its production that it can be called wine. Our mission defines this point. We may buy the crushed grapes of a wine press from an idolater even though he crushed them with his feet. And even though he takes the crushed grapes from the juice with his hand and places them on the ground, the flat area at the top of the wine press, so that they will continue to drain. It does not become subject to the law of Nesach wine until it flows down into the cistern at the bottom of the wine press, because only then is the juice considered wine. Once the juice has flowed down the cistern, that which is in the cistern is prohibited if the idolater touches it, for it is now wine. And the remainder, i.e. the juice remaining in the wine press that has not flowed down into the cistern, is permitted for drinking. Even if the idolater touches it, because it is not yet considered wine.